Right. Good evening. Um, my name is David, and um, I am running a playtest of um, Last Fleet. This is a game currently in development by Josh Fox of Black Armada uh, Games. Um, it is a Powered by the Apocalypse game of the uh, Last Fleet of uh, Humanity fighting in space against an implac implacable and inhuman foe. Um, it's quite heavily inspired by um, the um, series of Battlestar Galactica, um, and uh, it looks to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, just as as a, a quick disclaimer before sort of we, we, we kick off on things, uh, as I say, this this game is still currently in play test. Um, so the what what you see here, if you are watching this, may not be fully representative of the finished game. Uh, there may be some changes. Um, I may mess some stuff up. That the, all of these are possibilities, um, but. But, um, uh, you know, I hope it, it gives you a taste if you are looking at it. Um, if you are interested in finding out more about the game, I think uh, currently the best thing to do is to follow Josh on Twitter. I can't tell you his new one, uh, handle because he's just changed it, I think. But I'll, I'll put that in the in the chat below. Um, and um, you'll, you'll see him chatting about it there, I'm sure, in the future. And if you are interested in, in getting a look at the, the playtest rules, um, send him a message and uh, he will probably furnish you with them um the um at, thank you uh, thank you leandro uh yes yeah, so his 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 twitter is um at armada josh um so you'll be able to find him there um uh, this game is being run as part of the uh, gauntlet calendar uh, the gauntlet is an online role playing game community um, we play a lot of different games, um, a lot of PBTA, like the game this evening, but also all other kinds of story games, some OSR stuff and various other bits and pieces as well. Um, so uh, if you're interested in finding out more, there's a website at gauntlet-rpg.com, which um, has, uh, so you can, there, there's some forums there where you can pop in and chat to people. Um, there's the Hangouts calendar itself where you can like sign up for games um, like this one. Um, we also have a monthly gaming magazine called Codex um, and a whole host of uh, podcasts. So uh, do check those out. Um, I think that's all of the very initial um, uh, stuff sorted out. So I'll just quickly ask uh, ask my players here this evening to introduce, uh, introduce themselves. And then um, I will... Um, Kind of explain a little bit about what we'll be doing this evening. Uh, so anyway, as I said, my name is David. I use uh, he, him pronouns, and I'm going to go down the list I can see on my screen at the minute. So um, Donna, would you like to uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, hi. Sorry, uh, you can't see me. I'm having problems with Jitsi not liking my camera tonight. So uh, my name is Donna McCarthy. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Um, I'm based in Dublin in Ireland. And uh, yeah, we look forward to this game. I, Thanks, David, for running it. Uh, no worries, and thank you. Um, and next, uh, Leandro. Hi, my name's Leandro. I use he and pronouns. I'm also based in uh, Dublin, in the island of Ireland, and I can't think of a better way to spend a relatively chilly Thursday night um, playing humans struggling to survive against an implacable foe. It sounds like heaps of fun. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And uh, Diana. Hello, as I go by Diana Moon Online, I use she, her. I am on the West Coast in the brisk and sometimes sunny uh, Bay Area. And yeah. Thank you, Diana. And um, uh, last but not least, uh, Zach. Hey, uh, I'm Zach. Uh, he, him pronouns. I live in the beautiful uh, upstate New York area, uh, the best part of New York. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, to playing with you all. And uh, yeah, all right, that's brilliant. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, so yeah, as I say, just a quick introduction to what we'll be doing this evening. Um, so the first thing that we will do is we will establish a little bit of backstory about how you all came to be fleeing through space from um, uh, creatures that may or may not be uh, bear a past and resemblance to Cylons. And um, uh, and a little bit about the fleet as it is now, what what the what your world what your world was like before, that sort of thing. We won't go into huge amounts of detail on that, but just enough to kind of give us um, just enough to give us a um, 
um, a kind of uh, something to build from, essentially. Um, we, we can always uh, explore more about your past in play. Uh, once we've um, once we've done that uh, and got a bit of background set up, uh, we will then um, introduce, uh, well, we'll then go through the playbooks, see what playbooks people find to play. I think some people have made some decisions already, and that's cool. Um, then flesh out your characters a bit, and then hopefully uh, we'll get some time to um, uh, throw you all into the action and see see where we go from there. Um, excuse me. Um, so yeah, um, that is kind of the very very broad outline of what we'll be doing. Um, before we get started on that, I will quickly uh, mention the safety tools we'll be using this evening. Um, so. Um, this this game, um, you know, we, th this game is primarily about uh, war, um, so there's going to be some some potentially sensitive um, c content come up around that, um, and so we obviously want to make sure we're engaging with that safely. Um, in order to do so, um, we've got a couple of, of, of measures in place. Um, firstly, um, we've had a discussion uh, before I began recording about um, about the the overall tone and content of the game and. Um, as well as establishing some lines and veils, um, and and um, and some guidance around that content, um, so we we've got that sorted offline. Um, we'll we'll be referring to that um, as as we go through to make sure we're all, you know, engaging with with subject matter we're happy with, um, in the first instance. Um, we then have a couple of tools to use should should the need arise. Um, the first of those is the X card. Which is a fairly simple tool. Um, I'm, I'm sure all of my players here are familiar with it. But um, essentially, if there is any content that comes up that you're not happy with, you don't want in the game, whether that's because it's like upsetting or just because you think it's kind of tonally a bit off, then you can indicate that you want to use the X card by doing sort of the, you know, making an X with your hands by by just saying I'd like to X card that, putting something in in the chat at the side of the screen. Uh, anything that just kind of alerts us to that that's what you're doing. Um, if you do so, I may ask you exactly what content it is that you're Xing, uh, just just so that we are all know um, and so we can all avoid that going going, going forward, um, or um, however you want to deal with it. Um, the, but I will not ask you to justify why you want, you want to do that. That you do not need to justify. It. We just need to know exactly what we want to avoid. Um, that and likewise, if if um, um, if you do if anything you've introduced to the game gets X carded, don't take it personally. You know, we'll we'll just we'll move on. Um, the um, other uh, the other thing we'll be using is the um, is um, a script change tool by uh, Bo Sheldon, which uh, is a slightly more nuanced uh, set of tools. They're essentially designed around the idea of a uh, you know, remote control. So there are a few um, commands uh, that are, are particularly useful. The uh, first, and I, I would argue most useful of all of them, is the pause tool. Uh, you can at any point call out pause. And that's basically just an indication that you want to take a moment um, to sort of break character from the game. Uh, that, that that you can use that for a number of reasons. It might just be like, you know, your doorbell suddenly rung while you're in the middle of a scene and you just have to go and answer it quickly, something like that. Um, or it might be um, because like a scene is going in a direction you're not happy with and you want to have a quick out of character chat first to make sure to, to sort of sort out where we're going with it so you can make any any sort of requests or whatever that you want to do. Um, or likewise, and, and even better in, in my opinion, if there's a direction you want to go with a scene and you want to check in with the other players that that's that you know that they're all comfortable with it. Um, all of those are sort of good reasons to use the pause. Um, rewind is uh, used if something's happened in the scene that you, you're not happy with and you want to kind of skip back to before that happened and take the scene in a different direction. Again, this may be for for because of the content and, and your sort of comfort with it, or it might just be, oh, actually, I realize that what I said doesn't make sense. Can I, you know, rephrase, I'm going to rephrase it in a slightly different way um, because I, I just realized I didn't know that, that, you know, old man McGregor had a dog. So, um, um, that's that's fine as well. Fast forward is kind of the the counterpoint to that. It's the, this kind of ties into our veils a bit. Actually, you can use it. Um, you can say you want to fast forward something if it's if like, yeah, I don't want a graphic description of how the surgery goes. Can we just say that like, you know, he gets his leg fixed and move on, um, 
or um, it might just be that like a scene has kind of been circling around a bit and you just kind of want to move on to the move on to the action or move on to the next scene um, anything like that again perfectly good use for fast forward um, the uh, well not the final one but I think the final of the ones that I think are most useful um, in in this sort of concept context are uh, is the um, uh, frame by frame tool um, which it can be used if you want to sort of basically go through a scene a bit more slowly and deliberately. Again, this might be because we're treading around some fairly um, sensitive content and you just want to make sure that we're, we're checking in with each other frequently as we go through that scene um, so that we're, we're, we're kind of keeping in a comfortable place while doing so. Uh, there's two other ones that are slightly less. So there's instant replay, which you can sort of use at the end of a scene if you want to ask a question about something that happened in the scene or clarify something, or even just say, hey, I really like that scene. Um, um, or there's also the resume command, which basically just says, okay, after doing this thing, we're going to move back into normal play. But I tend to find that sort of stuff is just, just yeah, get handed with, handled with natural language. So um, uh, cool. Um, that is, so that's our safety tools. So um, what I'm going to do now is uh, just going to quickly refer to the um, the PDF here. Um, so yeah, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set up some um, some details about the fleet um, and 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 the the galaxy that you inhabit. Um, so. Uh, first, I'm just going to go through. There's a couple of sort of core assumptions to the game. Um, these are these are things that kind of are important features of the game, and sort of avoiding those is going to potentially break the game. Um, so they're, they're, they're things that, that should form a core of what 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 the game is is doing. Um, these are. Um, human civilization has been destroyed. It no longer exists, full stop. The most you're going to find now is isolated holdout groups, and these will be very few and far between. So essentially, you know, at this point, your fleet is is all of humanity for all intents and purposes. Um, the next one is that the um, humanity was destroyed by an inhuman enemy that is bent on finishing the job. Um, there might be some dissent within the ranks of the enemy. They may not be like a a, um, a unified whole, um, but as as a whole, the they want the annihilation of the human race and and by extension all of you. Um, uh, and finally, uh, sorry, no, not quite finally. Um, the players, um, yes, yeah, so the. Um, and most, if maybe not quite all of the human race, are in a fleet of ships fleeing through space. Uh, you can f jump from one point in space to another using some form of faster than light transportation. There is at least one massive warship, uh, the capital ship, as well as a uh, much larger number of smaller fighters. Um, it might contain medium-sized civilian ships as well. Um, so as I say, this is all should not be surprising you for people who've all seen at least some of Battlestar Galactica. Um, there's a significant military element to the fleet from which many, if not necessarily all, of the player characters will be drawn. Um, and uh, there are infiltrators on the human fleet. They appear human. Some of them may actually be human sympathizer, symp sympathizers, traitors, or like mind-controlled or impersonated people. Um, some may not be human at all. So those are kind of our key key pillars to the setting, which which will sort of build around. Um, but I'm now going to go through and ask you some um, some questions, um, and we'll um, actually. I don't think I've put in a specific tab in the Couch Keeper for this. I'm just going to add one now, just for taking some notes in.
Okay, so um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to start asking these, I think I'm going to start asking the initial questions again, just down the side of the screen at the minute. Um, and then I may bounce the follow-up questions around a little bit uh, amongst you. Um, oh, if at any point as well, you do want to like add something in or clarify something or say, oh, actually, can we do something slightly different? Feel free to like speak up or, or, or put your hand up or, you know, whatever. And, and we'll we'll do that as well. I'm, it's easier for me to do this as a guided thing, but, but you know, I, I still want this to be collaborative between the, all of you, so I do feel free to you know speak out of turn. Um, uh, so um, yeah, Donna, um, what was human civilization like before the war? Um, was there so the, some of the example questions here are: was there one home planet, a small number of colonies, or a vast galactic empire? So <clears throat> I like the idea of there being a relatively dominant central um, planet, but with a, you know, more than a, just a handful of, you know, outer colonies with their own, you know, um, I guess, idiosyncrasies, right? So there's a bit of, even on the, on a small fleet, we're going to find a bit of you know, um, you know, city versus country kind of uh, dynamics. If that makes sense. That that is brilliant. I like that a lot. Um, so um, I. Uh, I'll start, uh, yeah, I'll go, so I'll, um, Zach, uh, I'm, yep. I'm just going to ask this one quite simply. The big dominant planet, is it Earth or is it another planet? Are we talking more of sort of post-Earth post um, setup? Yeah, uh, I, think, I, think I, like a, I think I like a post-Earth setup. Sure Something thing. Removed from, sure from thing. our paradigm. Yeah, no, that's cool. Um, what what do you think the planet is called or was called, depending on its fate? Hmm. Uh, uh, helm, H E L M, Helm. Helm, excellent. Um, um and um. Uh, Diana, what um, what was what was Helm itself like? Was it a kind of was it an Earth-like world, or was it um, you know did it have a significantly different um, um, biome? How how, how sort of did people live there? Um, it was mainly through through domes, like the planet itself had a lot of resources, but wasn't habitable naturally for humans. Cool, cool, I like that. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's... Um... I think that's good. Uh, so, um, Leandro, um, what are the enemy like? Are they aliens, robots, demons? Do, pe does it, do people even know what their true nature is? Um, and what's kind of like their aesthetic? Um, actually, no. I'll leave the aesthetic for now. But yeah, what what is their what what fundamentally are they? Do you think? Um, well, they can't be robotic, demonic aliens. Uh, I mean, <laughs> by all means, by all means. Um, Why not? <laughs> yes, I say that as a joke, and now I'm, now I'm thinking that very seriously. I think their true nature is a bit unknowable. Uh, at least they feel like an out of context sort of problem that just came out of nowhere and laid waste to us. I think 
I like it's probably like the aesthetic of like what the robots in the Matrix were like. They looked fluid and organic, but they're still clearly like synthetic. I imagine corn like robotic insect like sort of um creatures that can like traverse through space quite impossibly really like uh like you'll see giant centipede attack ships crawling through space that sort of thing they they're they're quite hard to peg Awesome. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, uh, Donna, I'll come back to you. Um, did um, so these 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 creatures? Um, did they have? We obviously know that in terms of like their exactly what they are seems a bit. Of a mystery, um, does does humanity as a whole know where they came from? Uh, did they have any peaceful contact with them, or was it a, a kind of a, a straight to you know annihilation? Um, I think maybe there was um, maybe an, an exploration vessel sent to one of their home worlds or something like that, um, uh, which, you know, in, in some people's minds should have been sent before or should have been a military expedition. Uh, and in other people's minds, it was what provoked this whole thing, what brought uh, us to their attention. So I think there is um, Maybe maybe most of that knowledge has been lost, you know. Yep. But uh, there's there's hearsay and conjecture. Those are kinds of evidence. Yeah, sure thing. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, and um, Zach, I'll come back to you. Um, uh, I had another question in mind, and now it's gone completely. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to check. Yeah. So what? So we've got this kind of um, like insectile motif going on with them, um, and how how sort of how do they? What do their ships? Um, look like how do they fight do they kind of have uh you know do they do they have like laser weaponry or missiles or or um something stranger or more mundane if that's possible yeah i think it's like um like almost like uh what are those um those weapons that are used like propel things with um with like a magnetic force oh um, um is it um rail gun? Mass, yeah, yeah, rail gun. yeah like a rail gun so they they have this sort of yeah they have this sort of ability to manipulate i think i think like almost gravity or physics itself to propel so they they have it's it's almost like this more elegant version of the of of the bullet almost they're they're able to propel this matter um uh, yeah awesome yeah thank you i like that um and oh actually i will ask you i'm, I'm gonna gonna pick on you down and ask you two things in quick succession um the first one is is um, uh, what what uh, what's well either what are the enemy called or what do what does what does humanity refer to them as? Uh, 
Very good questions. Um, let me see. Hmm. Can I come back to you? We can, I can come back yeah. on that. Yeah, no, that's that's, yeah. that's fine. Let me think about that. <laughs> yeah, we, we can we can maybe maybe after um, I might come back to and ask in general after um after we've done the last question that that, that focuses on them, which uh, which I will will now ask you. Uh, <laughs> as I said, I was I was intending to victimize you. So, um, <laughs> the um um, how do the enemy hide among the fleet? Um, are they shapeshifters? Do they use like psychic illusions? Um, I think we've established that we don't look like you do in their natural form, or do they use just like mind control and possession rather than actually being physically present? Or they, <laughs> yeah, they do use they do use um, mind control, possession, and the way they hide themselves so that they can have more control is they shape shift into different technologies. So maybe the communicator you're using isn't exactly your regular communicator. Cool. I like that. That's nice. Um, awesome. Um, OK, actually, and yeah, I'm going to um, I'm going to start off by um, um, Leandro, I'm going to ask you, is it yet commonly known among the, amongst the fleet that they are able to um, infiltrate the fleet in this way? Um, um, I think um, if we're using the first episode of PSG as a touchstone, I, think, I don't think it's that common yet. I think in the chaos of having just escaped Helm, um some of that some of the disasters are probably was because of these these uh, sleeper cells these strange um shape-shifting powers but i don't think it's well known i think people are just like in the fleeing stage and not getting into the figuring out what the hell happened stage awesome um cool I think that's probably all we need to know on um, on that. Um, actually, um, Donna, what is the um, what's like the biggest uh, act of like sabotage or? assassination that's taken place as a result of this, regardless of whether or not the fleet as a whole knows it yet. Um, oh, how, how bad do I want to be? Um, uh, I think um, the last shuttle to come aboard the, whatever we're calling it, the major warship in the fleet. Yeah um was an enemy like a conglomeration of uh you know these aliens clubbing together to to look like a giant piece of te technology um and you know when it landed you know it just broke up into its constituent pieces and you know they they almost took the ship um That, that I'd, I'd say maybe that that landing bay in the uh, uh, on the on the war vessel is still kind of being repaired. Maybe cool. Yeah, no, that's good. Maybe there was supposed to be a bunch of people on it too. You know, so uh, some important people, right? But they never showed up. Yeah. Excellent. No, that's cool. Um, so, um, I, and now I'm actually just going to. Okay, that's I, I like that. I don't know, I was just about to, to ask around about that. But yes, yeah, so 
uh, we've got from Diana. We've got the 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 the, the military designation for the um, for them is the um, uh, um, pneumotics. I, I, I may be mangling that. Uh, forgive me if if so. Pneumotics. Pneum uh, play yeah. on pneumotic. <laughs> which yeah, I can't even cool. say anymore. <laughs> no, that's that's good. That's good. Um, cool. So. Um, so does anyone want to pitch in with with kind of uh, some of the more um, you know common um, what, what what you know that they the, the sort of slang terms for them um, I, I'll just let you shout out in uh, in, in, in a URG wish for this roaches <laughs> yep that's cool Yep, um, I'm sure we can we can come up with some colorful ones in play as well. So that's cool, um, uh, brilliant. And uh, right with that, um, I will come back round um, to uh, Zach, and I'll begin the next set of questions uh, with yourself. Um, so, um, Yeah, so now we'll, we'll ask some stuff about the fleet itself. Mm -hmm. um, so the first question um, is, um, uh, what is the fleet like? Is it just one big ship, or there are a number of ships traveling together? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's most interesting if there is a, a few. Is there? It's a you know the the big ship and the capital ship, and then uh, yeah, a bunch of ships traveling together as well. I think that's. Sure thing. Yeah. Um, are there other military ships in the um, in the, the the fleet, or is it, or is the, the sort of the capital ship the only uh, the only military craft? I think there are. I think there's at least like one or two m mid size sort of military ships. I like yeah. the I like the idea of there being a chain of command that where there might be some tension between those relationships. Yep, no, that's that's perfect, um, and um, I'll just make a note of that. Um, 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 and in terms of the overall size, we won't get into the, too much into the nitty gritty of it. But yeah, sort of dozens, fifty-ish, uh, hundreds. What, what are you thinking for sort of civilian ships? Yeah, civilians. That's uh, two dozen. Cool. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, so. Um, um yeah um um I've, I've lost my my order i was working through which is fairly haphazard anyway um so um diana um what um no, i asked you a naming one last time so i won't ask you that um um what uh, actually no I'll, I'll kind of ask the counterpoint question um what is the uh to, to the one before what is sort of the 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 technology of the uh of the fleet like is it kind of that battlestar galactica style where it's very like almost retro world war ii -y stuff or is it more more sort of uh, sci-fi than that it it's more sci it's more of a sci-fi like there's um which even then it was technically advanced for us the yeah, battle text yeah. the battle star stuff um 
it's like in between Battlestar and the latest Star Treks in terms of shiny tech wise, like it's not exactly like the recent Star Trek, even the shows um, where it's all shiny new. It's a little bit, a little rundown, but it's still the latest technology that we had at the time. Yep. Um, that's cool. Um, so, um, so yeah, it's got, so you don't have the sort of thing you had in Battlestar Galactica where they specifically avoided using computers and stuff because that's not necessarily the angle of attack that, that, that these aliens have used. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a bit more, um, yeah, you know, video screens and, um, and that sort of thing than, or hollow screens or what have you. And I think we established that they don't quite know that they can um, mimic machinery yet. So yeah, there's cool. no reason to stop using them. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's cool. Um, Um, cool. Um, Leandro, uh, this time I, I'll give you the naming one. What is the name of the uh, of the capital ship? Ooh, um, let me look at uh, my name doc. Where I do have a list of ship names. Awesome. Uh, let's see. No, I want to save that. <laughs> no, I save that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I think the capital ship is called the horizon black um it wasn't i i think it's repurposed from its initial per initial purpose same word in the same sentence Blech. um yeah i think it was it's it mostly became a capital ship because one it was quite large and that's where the authority is at the moment yeah I'm not sure if it a military vessel or was on its way to becoming a military vessel but uh well hmm. cool that's interesting um excellent um and um uh, yeah donna this time actually i will ask uh ask you a, a quick question and then and then uh a more detailed one. So the, the, the quick question is, is kind of the counterpoint to um, to what um, we got with the uh, with the um, alien. Um, what's what sort of it's like the 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 military technology that the fleet uses? Like again, are we talking, you know, lasers or um, you know, sort of big guns? What what, what sort of uh, um, I I kind of like the idea that uh, Zach, when Zach was mentioning like how you know impossibly high tech magic the uh, the alien stuff was, you know I think we are really really basic. You know we've we've messed around with you know lasers and plasma and everything like that, but not nothing seems to be as effective against these guys like good old fashioned slug throwers. You know. Yeah, sure thing. So yeah, it's possible that like laser weaponry and plasma weaponry might be a thing that exists, but primary the primary the primary armament is yeah just just like big guns basically. That's that's cool. Um, And uh, then I will follow up and ask, um, who runs the fleet? Um, is it um, exclusively military, or is there a civilian authority as well? Um, yeah, I think there is a very awkward um, chain of command 
not not just between you know this barely military vessel, the Horizon Black, and the proper warships in the fleet, but also between the kind of civilian leadership um, and the admiral or, or whatever. You know, there's a um, there's this whole dichotomy of we're in a military situation, so what I say goes, and you know, you you operate based on my say so from the civilian leadership. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, a good point of tension to get right out in the open. Yeah, cool. Um, I'm actually just going to check in if people think this is a an idea that you'd like to run with. Um, um, just just hearing that, I'm wondering um, is may, maybe the um, um maybe the the other two the other military ships um in this fleet are maybe actually from the um helm home fleet but maybe the horizon black is from one of the colonies sounds cool awesome it'll be nice to have that bit of tension when you're trying to like tell the others what to do yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, um, Zach, I'm going to ask you, um, so the, the, the civilian, the civilian leadership, um, uh -huh. that exists, um, what sort of, what, what is, what form does it take? Is it kind of a, um, the remnants of a, of a, of a democratic thing? Is it, is, is there a monarchy? Um, and hmm. who represents that, the, the government here? um yeah um i sort of i sort of like the idea that um it's basic i i have the I have this idea that the civilian ships are all you know privately held and uh there's a a, like a ruling council but the council is just the the, the owners or the uh, or the people that have the most stake in the, their particular civilian ship so it's almost like a, uh, yeah, like a sort of like a polar, maybe parliamentary type system, but it's only the the folks that have power on their particular ship or something. Yeah, that, that sort of like um, uh, council of captains idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um. And I, I guess, yeah, to sort of follow up on that, is this um, is this like purely a form of government that has arisen after the fall of Helm, or or was this kind of how society was arranged back on Helm in the first place? Um, I I think it's something new. I think, and I think um, there's probably I think the, the 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 civilians are constantly pressuring. I think the the council to readopt more democratic sort of popular means and perhaps that started or I don't, I don't i don't know right i don't think right now no that's that's cool that's, yeah. that's good it's certainly that pressure being there certainly gives a um a good hook uh, particularly if we have any civilian uh characters when we uh, when we sort that out next uh oh. cool um and um was there anything else i want to follow up with on um i think that's probably uh that's probably good for kind of the the leadership of the fleet i think we've got a good picture of it from that um so um Finally, um, 
Well, actually, this one um, I'm going to, to I'll, I'll ask this question to each of you in turn. Um, so I will start back from the top uh, with yourself, Donna. Um, I'm going to ask what factions there are on the fleet. Uh, these these are specifically separate to fleet leadership itself. Um, uh, the, the, the kind of the fleet leadership will always be assumed to be there. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see see if that's the case. But um, um, uh, what? Um, so the, the suggestions for this are sort of a union, a political party, a gang or criminal organization, religious group, scientific society, paramilitary, paramilitary organization, or or anything else really. Um, uh, so yeah, if, if if you've got a suggestion for that and want to give a little detail on them, that would be cool. Again, we can we can touch back on them in fully uh, as we go further in, but just just a sort of initial sketch would be cool. Um, yeah, I guess the that council of owner operators, yeah, I think is the is the big uh, power block, right? Or at least they're the people with the power, and they want to keep it that way, right? Um, And then I think um, I don't know if it's if it's uh, like a hodgepodge of organizations that are, are are trying to kind of kick against that, be it like a mixture of of unions or you know just kind of democratic societies that have have built up um, in a, in a in a variety of places. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm just thinking what would be a good. I guess. Uh, I guess if we just call um, uh, political activists. Yeah, just yeah. As a, yeah, um, yeah that's a good umbrella term. Yeah, um, we we may we may come up with like a specific like party name or something for for a group. But yeah, I think that's a good good thing umbrella term for the time being i, I um, mean may, may, maybe the fact is at the moment they're mostly splintered you know and yeah. that that is not helping their cause in, in any way um did you say three or um oh sorry i'm going to i'm going to go through oh uh, sorry yeah sorry. each of you yeah. To, to yeah um uh to get some um to get one each essentially okay, uh, so i think it will be a good no no that's, that's okay no I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be that harsh on you um but yeah, so we've got yeah, the one of the factions is this sort of nascent group of political activists at the minute mostly splintered and which isn't helping their cause, but presumably um, you know, will be growing in or at least will be trying to grow in influence um over the course of uh, of play. Yeah. Excellent. Uh Leandro, how about you? Um who do you mind if I ask? Like, there is like a mechanical thing to these factions, right? Um, yeah. So they, these these will essentially work. Um, they'll they'll be kind of uh, that in game. They you can sort of draw on them for help. Sometimes you, they can also cause complications for you. Every player will have a a relationship with each of the factions. Uh, well. I mean, you're, unless you're a civilian, you will start off having an entirely neutral relationship with all of them. But, um, but yeah, you can um, um, that th you will be able to sort of interact with them mechanically, and they'll also kind of be like, um, you know, threats in the PBTA sense of the word as well. They'll be kind of like um, or fronts, I suppose. You know, that they'll they'll be doing their own things and occasionally uh, causing problems for you to deal with. I kind of want to add a civilian kind of faction, a scientific community um, sort of faction. I think yeah. they're the remnants of the group who sent out that exploration vessel. Um, so they're like explorers, st not stargazers, well, kind of like stargazers. Um, hmm. um, I don't have the name for them yet. No, that's that's okay. We can we can touch on that in in a little bit. Um, I will. What I will be doing uh, actually just just to give you all a heads up now. Once we've got these factions detailed, I'll then take our first break of the evening um, as as we sort of ten past the hour now, um, and then we'll we'll take have a quick break and then come back um, to to go through characters. So if obviously if you you come up with with uh, names that you want to apply to these factions and stuff like that during that break, that's cool. Um, um uh 
brilliant. Um, uh, so, Diana, is there a, is there a faction you would like to see uh, in the fleet? Yeah, I was just double checking with one of the possible playbooks, so that way. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's it's military, but it's secret. Um, it's kind of like the um, the whistleblowers. So they're trying to get out information to the to the public to the civilians. Cool. Um, yeah, that's that sounds good. So like a um, um, yeah, um, I'll call them military dissenters um, for the time being. In lieu of, lieu of anything better. Um, Like they don't agree with the whole keeping mum to keep you know everyone quiet, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and such. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and um, uh, finally, Zach, is there a faction you would like to to throw into the mix here? Yes, I would. Um, I think there's a group that believes the the home world uh of the the pneumatics um there's something there's something very important about that for the human species and that we need to return we need to return to that place and that there's some there's there's some discovery for us and i don't know if it's it's maybe it's quasi religious but it's more like yeah, they believe there's a certain destiny attached to that home, that world, and uh, disturbing it and was was the first step in in some sort of prophecy, and then we have to return there. Brilliant. Um, yeah, that sounds cool. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm going to say um, if we want to take a 10 minute break, we'll call it. Um, and um, so come back at 25 past. Uh, we, we've got some, some initial ideas out now. So if you want to start, start considering uh, playbooks and stuff if you haven't already um and we'll we'll create your characters and 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 link them all together uh when we get back and um as i say we should then then get and and, and you know an hour or so uh to um actually um actually sort of get some uh, some play underway so um i'll see you all back in in about 10 minutes
Zach, do you have any idea what playbook you're leaning towards? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Uh, all of them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I could I could go a few different ways. Um, do you have one in mind you're thinking of? I'm waffling between Capricorn and Gemini. Yeah, I could. I'm leaning. I'm waffling between Taurus and Gemini. Mm. I mean, yeah, they're all really good, and I could see which character of Battlestar they were all based on. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. It'd just be too easy, though, if, for me at least, if I did the um, the, the Scorpio. So I'm like, I'm going, I'm keeping away from Scorpio. I'm like, I've done enough sleeper agent characters. <laughs> <laughs> I hear ya. I hear ya. Yeah, so just to, to I mean, I think this is a you're still getting to grips with it, but yeah, just to quickly explain the way uh, playbooks work in this. Um, we have, um, well, there are currently nine playbooks for nine of the um, uh, symbols of the uh, zodiac. Um, and yeah, as, as I just mentioned, they sort of, they, they, they're, they're more tied in this to kind of like personality traits, personality types um, than like in your standard, you know, PBTA setup where, where playbooks tend to be more focused on sort of a role. Um, in this, um, there are, um, you said you've just got the playbooks and you have, um, every playbook has access to the same three uh, role moves that you, you may choose to take, but are not required to take. Um, these are um, officer, pilot, and engineer. Taking any one of these basically means that you are in some way part of the sort of the military arm of the fleet. Um, and um, they give you a specific move that, that lets you do a couple of things. So in the case of the officer playbook, it gives you access to a, a move for sort of doing kind of commanding a group um, and also being able to like give fire support from a ship. Um, if uh, pilots can basically operate a fighter, if you don't have, if you're not, if you don't have the pilot move, you, you cannot effectively fight in space combat. Um, um, and finally, the engineer lets you work on, as, as you might expect, engineering projects that can achieve various things depending on exactly what project you work on. Um, so those those are sort of the three military roles. If you do not take any of the military roles, you are considered a civilian. Um, you may technically still be part of the military in the broad sense. For instance, if you wanted to like just play a marine. Um, you would sort of still be classed as a civilian because essentially your your influence doesn't extend to the fleet as a whole. Um, it's just um, um, oh, the, the video should have stopped sharing. Is it still um, showing up in your thing, uh, Dan? Yeah, it stopped here about a couple of minutes ago. Okay, I mean, uh, maybe it was not. Uh, maybe it's because I was muted. Yeah, that's that's bizarre. Is it is it still showing up for you then? It it's still showing up, but it it stopped uh, stopped being able to hear it as soon as I unmuted myself. So, all oh, right, that's, yeah, that's that's really bizarre. Yeah. It, Jitsi seems to be, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's trolling you, Donna. Great, playing interesting games yeah, with you this yeah. evening. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to show up next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be. It's a mnemonic. Oh uh, yeah. Trying to mess uh, with you. <laughs> being targeted. Excellent. Uh, so yeah. Um, um, but yes, yeah, like I said, you, you, the, the, that's kind of the, the, the broad distinction. Um, if you if you do not take one of the the um, sort of fleet uh, role moves. <laughs> Uh, then you will, um, as I said, you'll be classified as a civilian, um, and that will get you a bonus point of reputation with one of the factions that we've established um, as a as a kind of um, to represent your like closer ties to the civilian population of the of the fleet. Um, technically, I think you could, if you chose, pick two of the role moves. Or three of the role moves, if you really felt like going in for it, if if, it, if that made sense. Um, I don't think there's a restriction on that at the minute. It's certainly not explicitly called out. I'm thinking here, like, if you're going to play something, someone like um, uh, like Apollo from the series, you might theoretically take want to take both pilot and officer um, as as um, uh, role moves. Obviously, uh, so oh, and I should say as well. So you start with 
Um, everyone starts with three moves in total. Um, some playbooks have like a, a locked move that they have to take. The only one I can think of top of my head that does that though is the Scorpio, which I don't think anyone is playing um, uh, or has in, expressed an interest in playing. Um, you can use those those three moves to take either and um, to take moves from your playbook and you know these these roll moves. Um, so obviously, if you if you take a, one of the, the fleet roll moves, you'll obviously have less playbook moves to play about with. Um, and that's that is characters. Um, so I will give you all a moment to do that if you've not uh, sorted it whilst I've been rabbiting on. Um, and obviously, if you have any questions, uh, either for me or for the other players, feel free to ask. Um, so yeah, you'll, as I said, you'll start with three. Um, you'll start with three moves, um, and you will also start with. Um, there are five stats in this game: uh, raw, hard, warm, sharp, and smooth. Um, one of these will start at plus one. One of these will start at minus one, uh, and the rest will be at zero. Um, there. In I think in in or at least in a lot of the playbooks it will suggest a a a stat you might want to have your one in because it's more important to that playbook. Um, but you, you know you 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 can as ever choose choose to do do what you wish with that. Um, you'll see on on the character keeper there is a list next to each um, each stat as to what they. Um, what moves they um, interact with. Um, I won't go through all of the basic moves now, but if you do, if there's any ones you want to ask about, then feel free to do so. All right, Dan, are you going to do Gemini? If you want it, I can. You can have it. <laughs> I, it's like if you if you want it, you got it. I I'm I'm I, like they're both Capricorn and Gemini. I'm like, oh, yeah. I can think of really easy things to do. Oh, okay. Question: If you chose Gemini, were you going to choose compromised as one of your moves or no? Oh, that's a great question. Um, what did what it say here? Compromised. Do you? Oh, I thought that one you had to take. You don't have to take it. Oh, no, you don't. It's only Scorpio has a required one. I would probably take compromised. Okay, I'll let you have Gemini then. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> All right, sweet. I'll do that. Then. So then I'll do Capricorn. Because we got to we got to have some sort of duality in this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> excellent, it's, excellent. It's just Scorpio would have been too easy. Like, although I do like the fact that technically with Scorpio, like. The way, at least the way I read it, is like all the sleeper stuff the GM does. Um. Yes, a, a certain amount of it. Yeah, I believe so. You, ca I think it depends. You can um, influence gonna... if you roll. Yeah, if you roll well enough to be able to like. And you and you can I th you sort of I guess you can. You can choose to. Um, I guess there's no specific moves, but obviously you, you can, if you want to play as a more antagonistic character to the fleet, then you can do so. If you want to sort of play up being, yeah, like more of an some active, of, yeah, some of some of them were, yeah. Oh, it killed me when I found out who the rest of them were. <laughs> <laughs> I was so not expecting it. Yeah, so then I'll yeah, I'm gonna stick with Capricorn. Cool. That sounds good. Nice.
I can't wait to see how one indulges yourself in a fancy rakish way. <laughs> yeah. I know. Is there any, is there any other way? <laughs> All I could think of is that scene of Baltar when he when they think he's like godlike and mm-hmm, had that mm-hmm. soiree. <laughs> oh like... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll raise yeah, it would have been hard not to play Baltar. Rafish and conspicuous and completely undisciplined. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, and I've taken moves that lets me lecture people well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're holding the fleet together. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> Um, oh, what I will do, um, I'm just if I can do this sensibly, I'm just going to copy the example um, military rank structure that they have, um, they use, which is, I think, basically what they have in the uh, in BSG itself. They have a really bizarre um, mix of mil- of army and navy ranks in one structure, which. Which you know, I'm not like a huge military uh, um, military nerd, but it's enough to just confuse me every time when you have a colonel reporting to a to a commander. It's it's uh, yeah, it gives me <laughs> <laughs> mm. I usually just stick to Star Trek terms since I'm usually in Star Trek fandom, <laughs> so I'm like admiral, <laughs> you know, commander, mm-hmm. yeah. Star Trek is a beacon of common sense where where somehow where military ranks are concerned or you know paramilitary ranks are concerned. <clears throat> Though still they seem to want to put majors in where they don't belong, you know. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just figuring out my one last move. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, no, no, no rush. Um, yeah, once um, once we've done that, what I'll probably do is I will just go through and ask a couple of questions. Well, no, so I'll, I'll ask you all to introduce your characters, and then I'll ask a couple of clarifying questions, particularly where I, I know at least one of you has a move where um, uh, we, we've got some uh, we've got some chatting to have about it, uh, <laughs> and um, and then we'll what we'll do is is actually we'll get you to introduce your characters, and then um, we'll go through and do um, your characters will all have some um, some bonds that they have with other other characters on the fleet, um, which will start. Um, arranging between you all um and that will also include um potentially bringing in some npcs at that point as well um as i was to see before me a, a warm and supportive officer and a Hard-edged, uh, at all costs, officer. Nice. <laughs> I love it. Uh, cool.
Um, so I'll just quickly um, as well answer the last couple. So just quickly mention when, when the other. So as I say, you'll you'll start to pressure. Um, I'll get into this in more detail when we we start playing properly. But um, basically, pressure is um, will will get marked up sometimes. It's sort of the equivalent to um, harm in some ways in this. Um, but you also everyone has access to a move that lets you spend um, a point of pressure to add plus one to your roll after you've rolled it, sort of thing. Um, it should also be noticed, noted that whenever you mark pressure, you also mark XP. Um, it's the, the primary, um, the primary XP source in the um, in the game. Uh, you don't get XP on a missed roll because essentially the idea is that you spend pressure to miss rolls less, or being well. Um, so you, uh, um, that's kind of how your your, your XP source there. Um, uh, when you hit fi pressure five bad things will begin to happen. Basically, once you hit pressure five, you need to find a way of venting that pressure quickly, one of which is by hitting a breaking point. Um, this is a bit like the marks in um, um, Night Witches. So you'll see that these should be filled in down the bottom of your thing. You'll have a number of breaking points. You can choose to tick one of those, and it resets your, um, it resets your pressure back down to two. Um, once the, once you have marked that breaking point, um, it is marked permanently. You can't use it again. There, is, you can spend um, an advance to untick one of your breaking points. Uh, you'll notice that everybody has a um, well. All of you, with the exception of um, Zach's character, have six um, breaking points. Uh, the sixth breaking point of which is that your character dies in some way. Um, which will work out. It doesn't have to be instantaneous, but sort of their their ticket is punched at that point. Um, uh, sorry, Dave. Can I ask to pause for a moment? Actually, you can keep explaining. I just have to take a phone call. Oh yeah, no, no worries, no worries. Um, I'll I'll just yeah, I'll, I'll save off on the next bit. But yeah, see you in a sec. Um, yeah. So um, and yeah, basically the sixth. Once you hit the sixth, sixth one, you, you obviously you can choose to tick that at any point if you think it would be dramatically appropriate for your character to. Uh, exit um but yes yeah, so if you when you take that one that they will die um so um uh yeah zach's character you have seven uh, breaking points rather than six okay um though you'll notice if you look at the, the last two of those um essentially two of those breaking points write your character out of the thing so you you still functionally you only have um uh, you only have six, yeah. but you get to choose an, an additional way of uh, uh, of exiting the story, which, um, uh, or at least lo losing control of the character. Let's put it that way. Sure. <laughs> um, cool. Um, so yeah, I will. Um, we'll give uh, Leandro a moment to um, to get back. Um, does anyone have any any sort of general questions at this point? Um, or... So after we introduce our characters, then we do the relationship questions. That's right. Yep. Yep. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, I think what we'll we'll do with the relationship ones, we'll do um, w when we do those, we'll do all of the. Um, you'll do. I think we'll have I'll have you do all of the questions that you have there, unless there's one on that you really don't think fits um, with your character. Um, but obviously, they don't have they don't all have to be with other PCs. We can introduce some NPCs at that point as oh, well okay. and start start fleshing fleshing that out. Um, That's not common, right? With PBTAs, usually the relationship yeah. questions are with other PCs. It it depends a bit, but yeah, they tend to be uh, they tend to be more PC focused. And obviously, ideally, we'll have you, you'll probably want at least half of them to be with other PCs, so that we right. have some initial stuff going between there. But yeah, the, if if we want to introduce some some NPCs for some of them as well, that's also cool. Yeah, that's what I kind of liked about Hearts of Ulin is that you 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 made relationships also with other NPCs. Because I yeah. like that mix, especially if you're forced to have a smaller play group. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, I think with that uh, that done, um, I'll, I'll go through, and I will go through in, in character keeper order now. And yes, 
I did notice that some people specifically didn't put their characters in the leftmost column when they were uh, when they were filling them in. Uh, I've seen you. Uh, <laughs> I noticed that, and I didn't want to be the other, the last person to not do that. <laughs> Even if it meant that um, Leandro would have gone first. <laughs> That did happen to me. I took the second one, and everyone else took every <laughs> column uh, after me. Uh, yes. So, um, Diana, if you would like to uh, introduce uh, introduce your character first, please. Okay. Uh, my character is Yunwen Soto. Uh, they go by she, they. Um, she is an officer of the main ship. Uh, I'm using the playbook Capricorn. Very... Some would say very single focused in the military. It's not necessarily the military that she's single focused. It's more about like, we have to get this done. We have to power through. Your emotions don't matter <laughs> kind of thing. I have an exact, I'm kind of basing on the picture where where their, te their main job is the helms part of the ship. Could I have nope. uh, honestly thought of anything else that could possibly work but um she is willing to also do grunt work so when necessary having to go on to like like excursion ships and everything to go down that, that sounds good um thank you uh diana that's that's a good introduction uh and um yeah uh leandra would like to uh, introduce uh, introduce your character please Hi, yeah, uh, my character's name is Commander Alisa Cascade. Uh, uses she, they pronouns as well. Um, I think she is, I think she's also stationed at the Horizon Black. Um, the, the playbook I'm using is the Cancer playbook, um, aka the one, kind of like the polar opposite of what uh, Diana just said. Um, the role I have for her is like as a position I stole from Mass Effect. Another sci-fi uh um uh institution um she has she's the gunnery officer so she's in charge of the quote-unquote big guns that we use so she's kind of the one she's in kind of in command of the artillery um yeah so she is kind of like the opposite of of you know and in that she's someone who probably cares a bit too much about the people who work for her. in fact there are probably like some uh there's some dispersion that maybe that she's not really fit for military command she's it's a command that she's not that people didn't expect her to take on i'm kind of I mean, loose backstory my head is unfolding but i kind of think that i think her family or at least someone she knows is related to those scientific people who sent out that ship that ship and that 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 exploration ship and that she's only in the military really to like get away from that so there's some dispersions there, but she's proven herself well, and I think she definitely um, cares quite a bit about the people um, uh, who answer to her. Cool. Um, so I'm going to jump in and ask a quick question here. Well, that'll probably be both um, yourself and um, uh, and Diana um, about uh, Elisa and uh, Yunwen. Um, so um, I'd say, yeah, you, you've gone for commander. So relatively high rank uh, in in terms of the fleet. Um, do you? Th so I, I, I guess I'm a slightly leading question here. But do you think that um, Elisa may have um, served in a higher position on a sh on another ship in the past, and the the Black Horizon is just where she's ended up? Um, yeah, I think definitely she served most of her tour in like other ships and ending up in this repurposed, not military ship, the Horizon Black was never planned. Um, I think she, I think she served during a time when it was relatively peaceful, though. Mm. Um, which I guess that's. Or if not, not for the whole military, then at least she served, uh, her tour didn't take her to like more, didn't take her to anything that would, certainly not as bad as this, but. Yeah. And I'm, um, I'm, I'm imagining just from kind of the, the discussion that we had in around the, 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 um, the 
establishing the fleet and stuff i i get the impression that the war with the um uh, uh pneumatics is probably quite short and brutal um so it's it, i don't see that as being a kind of generational war that's been dragging on for a long time um there's probably something that was a fairly quick um uh thing so yeah that makes perfect sense um can i and, add an addendum actually? yeah um i think um she was actually just coming off of a recent tour and had uh is coming was coming back to helm on the horizon black um uh which which is a non-military vessel but she decided uh, i had enough military for a bit i'm going on i'm going off tour i'm gonna be on this ship and i think that's kind of like how i guess it was just circumstance why uh how she got placed there otherwise she probably would have placed in the other more military vessels but is there a yeah. price for no that's cool that's cool thank you um and yeah um um uh diana i was going to ask you um what what rank do you think uh yun wen is i have uh, so in, i've put in the notes uh section there kind of the um just the basic rank rank um um i would say at least the... lieutenant yeah i was going to say lieutenant sounds 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 like an appropriate sort of helmsman rank um yeah, yeah lieutenant or captain or something maybe but yeah yeah she's a bit too hard-headed to become captain that's fair that's fair <laughs> doesn't do the politics very well that's why she has a negative one in smooth <laughs> it's fair that's fair uh excellent thank you very much um uh so uh, Donna, if, uh, if you'd like to introduce us to uh, to your character, please. Yeah, I am going to be uh, playing uh, pilot uh, with the Ares playbook, uh, Lieutenant Castor Parada. Uh, his call sign is Talos. Um, I'm sure there's a funny story with that. Um, his pronouns are he, him. Um, and I think uh, probably not the best pilot not in not in the top three in the in the fleet but you know good enough that he's uh punch on for getting into trouble and partying hard um gets a, gets him out of the brig quicker than otherwise might have uh maybe he enjoys partying a bit too much brilliant yeah thank you yeah um uh starbuck who's not quite uh not not quite pulled off the uh, the daring uh, daring def uh, feats of uh, space combat yet. Yeah, I I didn't pick that move. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I picked the party hard move instead. That's fair. That's nice. Fair. Um, brilliant. Thank you very much. And uh, last but not least, uh, Zach, if you'd like to uh, introduce, uh, introduce sure. Your uh, yes, uh, I will be playing uh, Porter Malik. Uh, I am the a Gemini playbook, so um, I have a I have a past and uh, uh, a certain backstory that will remain uh, uh, between the GM and I uh, for now. Uh, but uh, Porter Malik, he, him, he is a civilian. He is the captain or uh, council member from the, the, the pleasure uh, yacht, uh, the Don Juan. And uh, he represents uh, that ship, um, but he's also, he's been, he's, he's, he's quite, um, uh, he's shown a a certain uh, friendliness, and uh, a mu there's a mutual respect between him and the the political activists. And he's very much uh, an enlightened uh, bon vivant. And uh, yeah, he is a he's a penchant for uh, for throwing parties and encouraging people to uh, forget that we might all die in the next jump. Um, so there's, you know, on the, I think on the Don Juan, there's, uh, you know, like a casino and, and, and a lot of fun stuff. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how that has fared <laughs> uh, in, in our exodus from uh, civilization. Um, yeah. So, and I picked uh, some of my, I picked a compromise, so that will be fun. Uh, Loosh, I'm good at um, getting other people to, uh, uh join me in my fancy rakish uh ways i'm i'm sure i'm sure talus will come over to the don juan at some point and uh i do have some followers and i believe those are uh political followers like i said i have a certain 
rapport uh, with the political activists. And uh, I, I think they see me as someone uh, with some sway and some charisma to help maybe help uh, bring them more into the into the fold, I think. So that's Porter. Excellent. That's uh, that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Cool. So uh, what we'll do now, um, as, as I mentioned previously, we'll um, um, just looking. Yeah, we will do. Um, we'll go through and do um, relationships. Um, so uh, on, on in, in the playbooks, you should all have, I think, four questions. Um, we'll go through. I'll again. I'll go through from left to right, but we'll do just one at a time rather than doing all at once. Um, and you can ask though one of those questions each, and we'll go back round again. Um, the you can either. As a person asking it, um, we can either get a volunteer from amongst the players, or if you think there's someone that we, it would be particularly interesting to have that relationship with, then get feel free to say, "I think this, you know, I'd like this to be with you." Um, or if you want to introduce an NPC, um, then that is also um, that's also good. Um, in particular, um, I think again between um, Dan and Leandra, we probably want to get an idea of the person that's actually um, in command of the Horizon Black. Um, though obviously, it doesn't that doesn't have to be like the first one you do it? But we will. We do want. I, th I think I probably do want to see. Um, I imagine the two of you may well have a relationship with them, or at least one of you probably will, depending on exactly what questions you have and if you think there's one that's appropriate. Um, cool. So with that, um, yeah, Diana, would you like to ask one of your uh, relationship questions? Oh, also I'll point out um, if someone, um, if so, oh, I, I just double check and make sure I get this the right, right way around. Um, I think that when you ask, when someone answers the question for you, um, Yes. So each um, each person that you have um, asked a question of, essentially, you mark um, a level one relationship with them. Um, so yeah, um, I, I could I could couldn't remember whether it was the person you asked marked one or you marked it. But yeah, it's, it's the person when you ask the questions, you mark the relationship with them. Um, but yeah, cool. So with with that blathering aside, uh, yeah, Dan, if you'd like to answer. Uh, I, and again, you don't. You said you, if you don't want to go through all four, then you don't have to. But you know, at least a couple is good. So yeah, I'll start with you, Diana. Um, I'll. I this could be for Leandro's character, but at the same time, it could be for the others. Um, who is sure I'm going to go too far? I think this probably fits me best because the other two seems like they don't. They have a looser <laughs> idea of what too far is. Compared yeah, that to works. <laughs> And um, I'm, so with that, do you think it's with, is it specifically with the way I do things on the, on the helm or specifically like just my overall attitude? I think it's the attitude. Like I assume and that you, Lieutenant Soto is a perfectly competent and probably quite uh, qualified to helm uh, the capital ship of this fleet. It's just that, yeah, attitude is rubbing people off. Well, you say people, mostly um, Elisa, but uh, people off the wrong way. Makes sense. You're muted, David. <laughs> I am indeed. Um, yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, Leander, if you want to ask uh, ask one of yours. Uh, I'm almost tempted to just ask the reciprocal question um, with <laughs> with uh, with uh, this one, um, which is, uh, you know, I know, uh, 
Nah, no, let's get that out of the way. Who is convinced I'm too soft to do my job properly? Honestly, it could be any any of you three, honestly. <sighs> Uh, I'm not sure. Like, the obvious one would be, uh, you know, and right, I think uh, I might jump on this one. Ooh. <clears throat> okay. Why do you think I'm soft? I mean, have we ever actually seen you fire those main guns? <laughs> that's true. The pilot's usually the one that's doing all the fighting. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you need like you need teams to fire those big guns. And people, and you know, people order those teams around. I'm doing my job. So. I mean, is this the is is this setup like where you are like standing behind some you know or whatever it is, and just telling them you're just passing on orders or firing solutions? You're you're not actually uh, doing like the the lining up and pulling the trigger. No, I'm not doing that at all. Yeah, you're not you're not the cannon person. But maybe, maybe this is just my theory that you're. If you had to sit down there, you would be a little bit squeamish. Could be, could be. Who knows? Uh, should I ask next, David? Yep, certainly. Sorry, I, I'm just trying to take notes in a sensible okay. fashion, uh, which which um, I'm struggling with. Um, <laughs> it's, it's always a problem doing the the, uh, the the relationships between people. It's like, what's a good way to write it? But yes, no. Yeah, by, by all means, carry carry on. Um, I'm gonna cut straight to the chase and wonder who is in love with me. I mean, that's the first question on the list for a reason, right? Because it's the best one. <laughs> uh, I think that's that's probably that's probably Porter. Okay. Is that? Um, you guys see each other at the parties. We all see the time. each other so, so often. Right? <laughs> I just think you're like, yeah. It's just like I don't know. I think he just totally. He's he's a bit of a. He romanticizes things, so I think he sees like you're like the you're like the hot headed, uh, you know, sp space we fighter. To say dashing pilot. Yeah, you're the dashing <laughs> pilot. Yeah, you're the dashing pilot, and you uh, and you like to drink, so that's that's fun. <laughs> and likes to work out based on the photo. Yeah, and you're, and and you know, you know, uh, Porter like what likes to likes to keep himself safe, and uh, he feels like having a, a really tough fighter on his side is a good thing so all of that is attractive to him i think so you broke up there but zach um, oh sorry do we think this is a um is this like a, a love from afar or is this a, a real relationship oh um it's a good question i think he i think i think porter's probably too par like a little too paranoid or suspicious to have any serious relationship right now so it's probably like um infatuate like love from afar right now i think okay awesome thanks but you pro i mean you probably you probably know you probably like you probably get the you get a warm feeling from him let's put cool. let's put yeah. it that way yeah, yeah. okay awesome thank you um, yeah, and uh, and finally, uh, Zach, if you want to ask the first of your questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. All right, let's go with um, who suspects I'm up to something. Um, this could definitely be any of them, I think. But um, also, if you if yeah. you'd like to introduce an NPC at this point, he might be on to you. That's also cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's see. I'm looking. I'm just looking at my question because I feel like I'm definitely I mean, gonna. If if you feel if you want to some. kind of, um, I was gonna say if you want to kind of read them all that way and, and see what other people think, that's cool as well. I just figure it's usually easy to just go around and do the money. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I I just feel like probably my character more so than the others probably has a lot of NPCs that could fill some of these. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. 
so you want should i you want me to read all of them just or uh, no 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 but, but you don't, don't okay. need to, I think okay if, if, okay if, so um, yeah who suspects him yeah I mean, I think it would be funny if Elisa suspects something, but um, I have an idea for one of your other questions since I was looking at the Gemini Oh, okay. One. Yeah, so, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I think it would be interesting if you suspect something or we could create another council member who suspects I'm up to something, like... Um, let me look at your other questions, actually. But yeah, I think I think, I think of all, of all the, the PCs, I think Elisa would be the one who would be suspicious of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Demagogue. Uh, <laughs> about. Yeah, it's, we. It, sorry. No, go ahead. No, no, no. It's, it's about, that's fine. So yeah, I, I, I was, I was confusing names. So carry on. No, it's fine. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I think, um, I think it's just the vibe. How we're we're kind of in the middle of a thing, a, mm -hmm. a desperate um, escape from certain death for all humanity and why are you yeah. partying yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> love it yeah 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 okay cool excellent uh so yeah um diana if uh, we'll, we'll come back around to you if you want to ask um ask another question yeah. Um, who trusts my instincts? I think I'm going to jump on this to to play the uh, <clears throat> to play dichotomy uh, with my relationship with uh, Alyssa. Um, you are definitely not too uh, too soft to pull the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Or, to, or to do rhyming speed or something crazy like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Trust your instincts. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Um, do you think there's been a specific moment that's caused that trust, or or is it just a kind of general? She seems to have her shit together, and and you know. Um, do we, do we think that, um, you know, notice something about, um, about the bugs? What are we calling them again? Uh, I'm just calling them bugs. The roaches. Yeah. The roaches. <laughs> roaches. Uh, notice something about their like flight patterns, uh, that she kind of passed along to, uh, to me in the middle of a furball. And it it turned out to be really kind of pivotal advice. I mean, not not quite the old fashioned silence always turn up until the left, you know, every <laughs> single shot. But you know, something, something like that, some little habit of there is that she knows. Yeah, yeah, I think that works with like um, zero compromises. Like I gave you an order, expecting you like it might mean you're doomed, but hey this will help win the little battle for us and you took it and it worked and you still survived. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That works for me. Awesome. Um, so, um, uh, where were we? Um, yeah. Uh, Leandro. Um, hmm. Um, let's see. I know which question I'm saving for like an NPC because frankly, I don't see any of these PCs going up to me as a mentor. Um, <laughs> just to make assumptions that are probably on point. Um, so I think I'll ask, who did I forgive for a major frack up? And I think because I'm already suspicious of Porter, it kind of has to be uh, you know, and... unless you don't want to be someone who causes a frack up. No, yeah, no, no, yes, it was me. It works with my um, breaking <laughs> points. <laughs> Oh God! So, what was the frack up? Do you think? Um, like, was it like? Did we like? Did you like just pilot um, in a way that like brought us too close to enemy trouble, or um, was there like uh, some 
bad navigation that made us lose fuel or something or what do you think no it was it wasn't even related to the roaches it was um it was like one of those like big meetings with all the ships and everything and i had to be there for to represent we both had to be there to represent and i and i would it really literally was one of the breaking points where i overreact with brutal force to another like member of the delegation and you had to stop me but that you understood why I overreacted even though it was bad but yeah Did that help because you, you 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 know i'm not good at these stupid political bullshit social yeah. stuff yeah although is that oh wait is that why what was the question you, i answered for you again uh ba, 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 ba. sorry i was looking at the wrong question um that i'm gonna go too far <laughs> yeah i think i could yeah i could see that from there like it was high like it was already a high tension like it, you mm. weren't surprised it happened like nobody was like mm. but yeah, it cool. did co it almost compromised us having the um maintaining leadership of what's left of the fleet mm -hmm. cool I love we're already using crack up. <laughs> <laughs> it was there in the questions. Like. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, there's a couple <laughs> uh, of not too obvious references. <laughs> uh, cool. Thank you. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, Donna, if you want to ask uh, ask another question. <clears throat> uh, let me think. I'm 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 gonna incline towards this one. Who thinks I'm out of control? Is, is it mom or dad? <laughs> it could be either, yeah. <laughs> hmm. I, I, I do kind of want to pitch that it be okay. Wait, I'll, we need to figure who's the mom and who's the dad in this. Um... <laughs> I'm the dad. You're the mom because you're the compassionate one. Okay, all right. Um, I, I literally one of my moves is yelling at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I kind of like the idea that like. Lieutenant, uh, like uh, uh, Talos, trusts uh, Yunwen's instincts, but Yunwen thinks that that they could uh, Talos could is could be out of control. Yeah, I think that um, that does work. Yeah, yeah, because for what I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What, yeah, I think the, like I trust yeah. you, but like. Because you do follow my orders, but I've seen this path before. Yeah, I mean, I'm only following your orders right now because they happen to be good ones. When, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I will be taking XP and plus one forward when you start giving bad ones. <laughs> but I'll never give bad ones, so you'll never improve. <laughs> <laughs> because I have so we, zero compromises, damn it. Yeah. Is, is this like... Yenwan's instinct, or has she seen something? Uh, it specific? based on past experience. Okay. Cool. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Zach. Um... All right. Let's see. If, let's see if anyone bites on this one. Uh, who looks up to me? <laughs> I think one of your followers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, again, I'm getting the feeling this one is probably probably feels like an NPC one here, just just yeah. based on the characters we have here. Uh, For sure. Okay. Um. So yeah, I, I guess um, I'll I'll kind of. Um, well, I don't want to say make suggestions. I'll ask a couple of questions here. Do you, so I guess, do you, 
do you want this to yeah do you want this to maybe be one of your followers or would you like it to be perhaps one of the other uh one of the other leaders of another ship or yeah yeah i think i think that one i i was i started uh i think i'm imagining now it's maybe one of the maybe someone that so i'm not i guess i, I think i think Porter's probably in his 30s so maybe it's one of the it's some it's a captain that's even younger than he is perhaps like someone in their 20s um who who's another captain who's who's an idealist um and very much um comes off much more authentically i think than porter does even though porter has charisma and he's smooth and he can get away with stuff but i think this guy is like the is my full oil in that he is very idealistic and his motivations are very pure um uh, brilliant so. um so i'll give you a moment on that but I'll, I'll probably come back to you when i get back around to you again and just ask for a name a name, a yeah, name sure. for them and also a sort of name and a brief description of their ship i mean by description i mean as in yeah i got a you. hauler or you know whatever it is but yeah yeah Cool. cool. Thank you. Uh, so yep. yeah, um, Diana, um, I'll come back around to you. Um, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, since the technically left is Porter, would Porter like to be an old friend? Yeah. Sure. And it'll relate to the if you're going if you're going down the list to the next question of yours technically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, we're old friends. I like that. Ooh. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I that that uh I think this I think um I think then you might I think you might learn something about me. If oh, we, okay. if we've, so have we, you think we've known each other for a while? Uh, yeah, like at least if it, if it works with your backstory, that is of course, um, yeah, at least it, through it, military, it <laughs> military, at least through military training, like somehow oh, okay. we met so, like, you know, at the very least, or if you, we can even do like before military. That's okay. That's, let's flush, let's flush that out uh, in, in, uh. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cause my, I'm compromised. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why I let you still have the parties. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Is Yunin from uh, from Helm or from the colonies? Because I'm imagining a uh, Porter is from the colony. Is from yeah. a colony. Yeah, she's from colon from one of the colonies. All right, perfect. Then I think I think we can. I think this will work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want to do the the recent Star Wars thing. And it's it's a Hispanic uh, colony, like inspired, perfect. like where where Poe is from is a Hispanic inspired planet rebel planet <laughs> yep so. cool i like it sounds good um I, i'm not going to understand what that note means when i read it but i've written it down so <laughs> now um uh so sorry yeah uh, just the, the um that's yeah your old friends from from back in the colony um i'll just put that in uh awesome um yes uh thank you uh so yeah leandro um, if you've got another question you want to uh um yeah the last one i have again will default to porter but um I, but if it doesn't make sense i can make an npc for either of these two because again the mentor one i don't think any of these three would look up to me as a mentor um but the last one i have is uh who's your blood relative oh <laughs> do you think we're related or um, you, don't have, you don't have to if it messes with your backstory that's perfect yeah yeah, yeah I, I think it would be 
yeah, it would be tough to tie both of you two in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm fine not having a relationship with Porter. It makes more sense that I'm suspicious of you then. It could, I, well, I it, it could be that you're a blood relative, but we've never met. Hmm. Like we have like a shared dad or like or, a, like a, maybe our, maybe like we're cousin, like cousins cousin, or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. That was what I was thinking anyway. I don't think we were going to be as like brother, yeah. sister close. Yeah. Like, but I, I, make more sense. if we were, co- if we were cousins and you've never actually met me face to face, I think that would work out. Yeah. <laughs> we don't actually know each other that well. And maybe we're yeah. trying to. Yeah. I might've heard of you. Yeah, I mean, you could always distrust him because you know him well. You know, <laughs> right. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm curious though. Uh, would you guys know that each based on your last names? Because you're like, oh yeah, that clan over there is like family, yeah. or totally no idea until like you randomly mention the same great uncle. I think I probably I I don't think Porter has had any idea and i think maybe you brought it up and maybe one of the maybe that's one of the reasons you're suspicious too is like i had no clue <laughs> like i don't I, I don't think i know our family history very well yeah yeah and i think i've definitely i think i've heard some i'm closer to i'm i'm totally closer to the family than you so i think i've heard about that porter <laughs> okay yeah cool yeah that okay that that works then So, Leandro, my last two questions are both will work for you, I think. One is, uh, who do I have a rivalry with? And the other one kind of feeds into the previous link, which is, who do I figure is going to get us all killed? Mm. Yeah, I think I will lean towards the second one, mainly because uh, uh, how I imagine Elisa, she thinks she's above rivalries. So it's that's it that's petty stuff. Um, I don't think she may twig that like uh, about uh, what do you think about her, but like um, I think because I think it definitely like you you'd figure that you need I don't know does Talos think that like the fleet needs officers who have actually had experience out in the field. Uh, you know, absolutely. If you if you haven't uh, seen the elephant, you have no idea. You know how you're going to react. You know. Yeah. Um, and Alisa feels seems like someone who doesn't look like they've had much experience in the field. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I think it's me. Um, so uh, I think we know this one, uh, Yunin. Uh, who needs me, warts and all? Yep. <laughs> cool. And, Doesn't uh, like to admit it ever, but. Mm-hmm. And then my last one is who thinks I'm a dangerous liability? I mean, I'm and feeling that that doesn't really fit, but yeah, it could be an NPC too. So, just if someone, if that sticks out to someone, cool. And then, uh, so, and then for the, um, for my NPC who looks up to me, um, her name is Dia. I put it in my relationships, Dia Weiss and, uh, or Wise. And she is the youngest, uh, captain council person in the, in, in the thing. And her ship is called the Sparrow Hawk. And it's a, it's a merchant vessel or formerly it was a merchant vessel. She's very idealistic, very, very sweet. So I don't know why she looks up to me, but she does. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Cool. Um, so, um, yeah, I will just... Um, I have one last one, which yeah, is we'll go to an NPC. Say. Yeah, we'll yeah. go to an NPC. Um, or unless you're asking a follow-up question, sorry. No, oh, no, no, no. I was coming uh, back around to you. Yeah, yep. Yeah, so who nurses a grudge against me? Um, and I think... So technically, like if we were basing on Battlestar Galactica, um, Admiral Adama and the president were technically the high ups and they both were on the main ship. So I'm thinking maybe whoever would be the version of Admiral Adama isn't on the main ship because we weren't a military ship. But since we have the bigger hmm. guns, technically, or the, uh, we're the biggest ship. So it's one of the smaller military ships that's like an admiral. And they um, have a grudge because, yeah, someone like me and maybe between like me and Alyssa, but they put it more on me since I'm the more military person, is mad that I'm commander of the ship and they, they didn't get a chance to like, you know, take over. Because technically hmm. they are higher ranking, the highest ranking. <laughs> How does that sound? Yeah, that sounds good. Um, so I'll just have to think of a name. But yeah, yeah. Admiral type. Um, uh, yeah, resents. Um, we, we, we'll sort of say for essentially just being, I think he, you know, basically oh. sees the, the, you know, the, the Horizon Black as basically being just like a colonial militia ship, which I mean, fair play basically is, but yeah, um, that's cool. I think I've got one last question as well for an NPC, uh, which is that rivalry question. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so does it make sense to have, or like squadron leader or the CAG have gotten that promotion over me? Um, yeah, that 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 makes perfect sense. I was going to say probably it would make most sense for your rival to be another pilot because yeah, yeah, um, and yeah, and maybe maybe there's a sense of of begrudgery there because maybe they're um, they're they're you know helm royalty or whatever the equivalent is you know they're in with the right people. So it may not have been entirely on merit, or maybe it was. Maybe it was both. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you'll definitely claim it's not. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, awesome. Um, again, I'll, I'll come back to you in a moment for, for like a name for them, um, but. We, we, I'll give you a second to come up there. Uh, so I just, um, Leandro, did you have, you had one? Yes. Um, it's the, who looks, oh, let me see the wording of this, who has me as their mentor. Um, I think it's a, a, it's a younger officer, a sergeant. Um, her name is Frances Lagrange. Um, she's, she was originally stationed, um, uh, a military vessel, which I think is with this fleet. Uh, let me look at my names list. Um, the Midnight Gale, and uh, Gale as in the wind gale. Yeah. Um, and I think she was caught up with me at the, with the initial evacuation on the Horizon Black, and has kind of like. It's one of those informal things when formally she should probably have been back at her unit, but she's insisting and in sticking around. Um, uh, because I, I don't know, maybe she liked how I did things. Um, maybe, I don't know. Um, that's kind of like the most about it. I think she's, she's quite young. I think there's like a gap of five years between us, or six years. So she, she's quite, I think she's just barely started out as well in her career, um, for sure. Still a bit impressionable, you know. One of those, one of those um, 
one of those poor pie faced uh, uh, soldiers you get at the latter end of Band of Brothers, um, who ends up not doing anything exciting. And all the veterans are like, well, of course you don't get to do anything exciting. Where it's good, it's good for you. Um, that's a, sorry, that's a tension and a half. Um, <laughs> I, I need to watch Battlestar Galactica so I have more appropriate references. Apologies. <laughs> You're good. Uh, cool. Um, did anyone have we covered off everyone's questions now, or or, or the questions people want to do? Uh, yes, I had. I just did one more for uh, an NPC I created. So, and that would be uh, who thinks I'm a dangerous liability, and I created. Um, uh, Tefa Rosen, um, who is the captain of. Uh, the Colorado, which is one of the largest civilian ships. It's like a colony transport ship. Um, it's for moving people associated with corporations around to, to different colonies and stuff. So it just has a has some clout. It's uh they're they them. Cool. I'll write that down. Um are they perhaps the the closest thing the, the the council has to a leader or possibly I, the actual leader of the council. I think I think they definitely I think definitely, yeah. They they definitely have the most clout. Um and if it, if there was ever to be an elected figurehead of the council, I think they would receive the votes. Sure thing. Sure thing. Yeah. That's great. Um awesome. Uh that's that's some good stuff to be getting on with. Um, right, so we're we're half. We just have gone half past now. I think I think I probably won't start us off with any actual play this evening because um, we don't have that much time to get it done in. I'm also aware that unfortunately, I, th um, I think next week we won't have um, Donna. Um, again, apologies for that. That was a scheduling snafu on my part. So, uh, <laughs> um, um, but yeah, um, we will hopefully get get the rest of you, and we'll be able to get something done. I may get an extra player in. Um, I've, I have put like an extra slot in. I'll, uh, but I, and I'll, I'll probably mention it in the players. But I'm, I'm happy to run for just the the, the, the three of us. Uh, well, three of you, I should say. That's that's fine. Um, so um, that is cool. Um, I think I have enough notes here that I can decipher them all and, and fill stuff in. Um, did anyone else have any fine... Oh, that's one thing I do want to actually get uh, nailed down um, before we uh, before we sort of finish up for the evening. Um, who who do you think is that, is the um, is the actual um, commanding officer um, of the Horizon Black? Yeah, it's really tough because technically Elisa has the official military ranking. Hmm. Yeah, but I think she is specifically sequestered herself to this. I'm just in charge of the guns. <laughs> um, I can't. Right, let me look at that list of ranking. Um, yeah, military. Yeah, military. I, I'd be higher up, but captain could definitely be someone else. Um, I don't want them to be related to one of the PCs. It could be another. It could be another commander. Um, you know, they they share the same rank as you technically, but they have the command position. Um, um, yeah, acting commander in chief or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um because i was going to ask but then i actually quite i liked the one you had because i was actually going to ask if um if you wanted uh if you wanted leandra the um the actual commander to be your, your mentee because they were less experienced 
but I, Ooh. you know, quite like the character you introduced. So, that, I mean, if you still want that relationship with the the, the commander, then I, I would be happy for. Um, I think. Thing. I mean, maybe you, maybe we could just say that Alisa once was originally charged in charge of like guns and rail guns and whatnot, but she, because she's the highest ranking, she's ended up as captain of the Horizon Black. Yeah, if 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 you're 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 cool with that, that's well. It's either that or if or if folks are more interested in creating an NPC, which fine either way. What are folks interested in? Oh, I'm easy. Whatever, <laughs> whatever you military folks think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the burden. If you're interested in playing the burdens of command, uh, Leandro, I'm good with that. Uh, uh, it gives me more room to make inspiring speeches. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so say we all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, exactly. hey, those that speeches mechanically can be very useful. If it yeah. But don't expect um, me to be like uh, Commander T <laughs> and just back you up all the time. <laughs> sure. Okay, I think I think you know, heavy is the head, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Um it's it's possible that the um perhaps the the officer who was actually supposed to be in command um because we we established when the initial act of sabotage on on board the um horizon black happened it was a shuttle landing that was supposed to be filled with uh, that was supposed to have some important dignitaries on it so it may be that the the actual commander of this ship was down in the visiting party when when that happened mm. um and yeah. and yeah you are de facto um de facto commander yeah and i think and uh, well, i i don't want to change my relationship with sergeant lagrange they're now like my aide de camp my yeah pa so to speak Field, field promotions for the win. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, kind of, what's uh, what's the I've forgotten her name. The um, the the yeah. The, there's the, the the sort of the junior officer in Battlestar Galactica. Um, I forget what she's called. Oh. All right, it's, it's, it, but all right, it seems like I can't wait to meet up with you, Dono, for those DVDs. I have to fire up Netflix. <laughs> yeah. I, I can get all of this. Uh, the one yeah. who has a fling with, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah, really. remember her name for the life. Of, yeah, I, can't I was just watching this the other night too. <laughs> I hated that whole story arc. <laughs> and then when, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, cool. Um, no, brilliant. That's cool. Um, I will, I will come up with, um, I will come up with a name for the the the, the, the former commander and also the 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 admiral. On the other ship, who? Um... Oh, I came up with the name—the one that has a grudge oh, against me. No, you did brilliant, cool, uh, excellent. Yeah. Admiral Sebastian Ballard the Third. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> I hate him already. Yeah. <laughs> what a jerk. Yep. Ballard. I call him, I call him Stubby. Yeah. <laughs> Just to piss him off. Yeah, I, I think he's probably probably nursing somewhat of a grudge for you in his eyes, showing up the entirety of the navy when you almost punched out that person in the. Uh... <laughs> mm -hmm. The third, more like the turd. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, cool. So, yeah, thank you, everyone. I think I will leave it there for this evening. I'll stop the recording. Um, and we uh, we will, um, yeah, uh, said, again, apologies, Donna, but, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll see the rest of you hopefully next week. Obviously, if, if you have problems, then let me know, and we'll, we'll sort something else out. But um, And then, yeah, we'll be back the week after. Uh, so thank you very much again, and see you all later. See ya.